Good morning everyone. This is a three-part pineapple background tutorial. The third part is optional. You can leave it out if you want. This would need to be silk screen and I will show you why during the upload process. So if you have a design space tab open and then also if you want to use the same image, I had told you guys I would put it in our group and simply type pineapple over in the search bar to find that and that top post there is the one where I put the image. Click on that, right click, save image as, <coughs> sorry guys, and then save that whatever you want to name it and click save. I've already done that so I'm going to click out of that. Then in your design space window you will click upload, upload image, browse and then whatever you named that you'll be able to find that i'm going to go ahead and click that and open this is black and white easy nice borders we're going to click simple continue select and erase tool is already chosen for you when you come into this and this is why this will be a silk screen all of this is enclosed within that outer shape so if you do not do a silk screen all these pieces will be lost unless you should decide to bridge, but this is gonna be kind of small and I'm not even gonna go there with bridges. <coughs> mm, sorry. Continue and save that as a cut image, name that whatever you like, and then hit save. I'm gonna hit cancel because I already have it here. And it'll automatically, when you hit save, it will open up your saved images, your uploaded. <coughs> wow, so sorry. Click on that, you'll get a green box around it, and insert image on the bottom right. Now this moves around as one piece, so we need to separate that. We're going to use a shape, a square, you can use other shapes if you want, it's just my go-to. And duplicate that square, because we need to separate two of these away from the other. Click on one of your squares, click on your original image, and at the bottom right, slice. Click on your other square, your original image, and slice on the bottom right. Now we have all these extra pieces in our layers panel, so we know we do not need the ones with the squares. We're going to get rid of those. And then we still have duplicates of a couple of them, so we'll get rid of this duplicate and this duplicate. It doesn't really matter which ones you pick, as long as you end up with three sh shapes. <coughs> and now they move freely by themselves and I'm gonna go ahead and change the colors of these. And the reason I do that is so that when I'm picking parts in my layers panel to get rid of, they're easy to find because there are three completely different colors. I'll usually pick colors that coincide with my design so that I can find them quickly and easily. And now I just drew a box around this and I'll move this. That'll keep that as one piece for a second while I move it over here. And then I'm gonna click on my green top, so I have all of them chosen, align, and I'm gonna center those horizontally so that it makes sure that they're lined up well. Now, with them still chosen, on the top right, I'm going to choose group so that I can move them around as one group without having to constantly draw a box around them and I don't wanna lose pieces and have them move around. So I'm going to make this, um, I'm going to make it about 0.65 inches tall. And then bring in our shape square. This will be our stencil frame. For the video purposes, I'm going to make that white so that you can see the things that I put on it. And we're going to make that five and a half inches tall. So this we will use to design, and as you can see, our pineapple just went behind it because the pineapple was there first. So I'm going to move this to the back by clicking Arrange, Send to Back. Now you'll be able to see the pineapple on it. So I'm going to take that pineapple and duplicate it, and I want quite a few of them. Let's do seven, I like odd numbers. And it really just depends on what look you're going for. You can put 
however many in your rows that you want, you can make them however big you want. Depends on your project that you're working on, the size of cookie you're working on. You can, that's the beauty of using your Cricut to make your own stencils you can customize. We're gonna click align. We're gonna align the tops. So that brings them all up in a row together. And then you can see that they fit quite well in there, but I wanna space them apart. So I'm gonna move one of these guys over quite a bit, move a couple over. Now, we're gonna draw that box around them again. With the Align button, we can hit Distribute Horizontally, and that does all the work for you. We're gonna go a little bit more, so I'll move it over a little bit more. And then Distribute Horizontally. So, oop, lost my box. Align, I grab them, grab them all with a box. Align distribute horizontally. And I'm gonna, let's see. A lot of times what I'll do, I'll bring in another shape, another square, and I'll show you why. If you make this one 5.25 inches, then you will know that all of this is gonna have enough room around it to grab into your stencil holder. You don't have to do this. Just something I often will do for a visual. So I wanna know that these fit within this border. So again, I'm gonna arrange, send that to the back. And those fit well in there. Could even space them a little bit more. Let's distribute horizontally and see if those still fit in that space. They do, they fit perfectly in there. So we can get rid of that box. Now, I am gonna take these guys and what I wanna do is I wanna group all the greens together. This will speed up our process later. So I'm going to actually ungroup these. Uh, I have to click on each one and ungroup. We needed them grouped to move them around there for a second, but now we're going to quickly ungroup them. Two more, one more, ungroup. So now I'm going to go through my layers panel, and this is why I like to color code things, because I'm going to choose all of the brown pieces. Three, four, five, six, seven of them and then group those colors together. Now I'm gonna group all the greens together. It doesn't matter what order you do these in. You just wanna group similar colors together. Group, and now I'm gonna, the remaining is all of these yellow pieces. So we're gonna group those together. <clears throat> this will make it faster when we're deleting pieces later. But now I want to group back together this entire group. Did my yellow guys group? My yellow guys did not group. So you should see the word group right above them if they're grouped. Oh, it says they're grouped. Okay, well, we're, we're grouped, let's see. Oh, because we're in the big group. So just kind of keep an eye on your layers panel. Group. We have the, the green and so now we have a group that is just those guys. Somehow I got them clicked all together. So there's the green guys, group them together. There you go. Now we have a group that's all green, a group that is the brown. And now I'm gonna click off of that so I make sure nothing's chosen still and do my yellows group. So now we should have three groups in the layers panel. Yes, we have a yellow, a green, and a brown. Now I'm gonna just draw that easy box around them and group that together. 
duplicate that group. And so what I'm going to do is bring this off to one side and bring this other one off to the other side. Basically just trying to line up the center of this green guy in between those. Now we're going to duplicate this. Make sure you don't click off of that so that that will stay together. Duplicate that again. And then we bring my box over here and see. Okay, I'm going to move these just a little bit. Now I'm going to grab every other row here. Since we have just single row, oop, go off of it. Grab this one, grab the third one, and the fifth one. And align left, uh, align left at the top there. Now I'm going to grab every other row, the bottom row, the middle row, and then one up there. And we're going to align those to the right. And then I don't really like where that is, so while it's all still chosen together, I'm just going to use my arrow key and move it over a little bit. Okay, let's see how that fits. That still fits within our box, but remember we wanted that edge around it. So now I'm going to grab all this together, bring it down just a little bit. Make sure that fits. <clears throat> that looks good. And again, personal preference to cookie cutter size you're using, what you're working with. Grabbed them all. Let me group them for a second because I want to center them on here. I'm going to center those on my square. And if you don't group them, they'll all jumble to the middle. So align and center. There we go. Now, I need to group that with my square so that I can duplicate that without everything moving. A lot of grouping and ungrouping in multi-part stencils. Now I want to duplicate that two times. If you're not doing the third piece, you only need to duplicate it one time. There's one of them. Let's duplicate that again. I don't think it duplicated. My internet's a little slow. Okay, so now we have our three parts. This first one, be very careful not to move things at this point because you want everything to stay centered exactly where you left it. Ungroup. So that ungrouped our square from our pineapples. So I just clicked on there to find out which one it is in my panel. So this is why we grouped our yellows together. You can see when I clicked right here on the yellows, uh, right there, this is going to be all of our ye yellows. Let's see, let's ungroup this because I had green and brown still in it. And now when I click on this, it's just yellows. So I'm going to delete those yellows. I want to be have left the green on this first one. So we're going to leave the greens. This grouping, check the highlights in there. It's all just browns. Delete that. Go down and click on another one. This grouping is all yellows. Delete. Go down some more, check this grouping, and just make sure it's only the browns. Delete. Scroll down a little more. We're going to check this one. All yellows, and it's right here. You also want to kind of keep looking back to make sure that you're on the first stencil still. You end up with a lot of parts over in your layers panel when you're doing multi-part stencils. Delete. Oh, there's some more yellows. I hope that has green. So I'm going to go down one group word. 
yellow, delete, and down some more. This grouping, still over here, delete. Two more groups, let's see. That yellow one, delete. And then this brown one. Delete. And you can see we're going to be left with the green tops only on this first stencil, and that's how we want that. Delete. Okay, so now at this point, you can just draw a big square around this and attach that so we know nothing is going to move on that accidentally. That is attached. That's ready to cut. We're going to Click on our second one, again carefully, not to move anything. And on this one I want to leave the yellow behind. So I'm going to grab all, all of the greens and all of the browns. Green, and I'm going to go ahead and just grab these since they're not touching the yellows. Green. You have to get the word group or it won't grab them all. Green. And another brown. I think this is our last one, brown. So this will leave us with the yellows. Let's see. See if we have any left after that when we It'll take a minute. Yep, we still have this row here. So, we'll find where that is in the layers panel. There's a green group. And there's the brown group. So hold your shift key down to grab both of those and hit delete. And again, we're going to draw our square around this carefully so as not to move anything, and at the bottom right click Attach, so that's done. If you are not doing the third piece, then you are done and ready to cut. If you are doing this third piece, we're going to follow that same pattern, but we're going to get rid of the yellow and the green, and leave behind the brown. Grab the yellow and the word group there. I'm going to delete those and then get the other last couple here. So two more rows. Yellow and green. And our other one must be up here. Yes, green, yellow. So you can see why making those colors is so helpful instead of just trying to pick out shapes. So this one, now same thing, attach. Those are all ready to go, but keep in mind that this third piece will need to be in silk screen or all of your lines that you're going for to begin with will be lost. And these will perfectly line up once they are cut. So if you have any questions at all, please feel free to place them in the comments, either in the YouTube page or in the Facebook group, and I will get to them as soon as I can. Thank you. Happy crafting.